Hello, welcome back to The Interface. My name's Alex, and today we're looking at the infotainment system on the Honda Jazz. This is the 2023 model, and we've got a nine inch infotainment screen here with support for wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto, which is fantastic. So on the main screen, there's quite a bit going on. So we've got the time up here. We've got the status, whether, whether or not your phone is connected. Uh, we've got the, at the moment, we've got no phone connected. And we've got the audio source settings up here. Down here, we've got the display modes, a uh, shortcut to the DAB radio, shortcut to different things along here. And this will change depending on what apps you use now and again. So on the main screen, we've got all apps, navigation, phone, FM, Bluetooth audio, smartphone connection, traffic assistance, trip computer. And then on the second page, we've got general settings, vehicle settings, USB, AM, DAB, system updates, Wi-Fi hotspot, clock. And then on the third page, we've got messages, display modes owner's manual and an app installer because the honda jazz infotainment system like the honda e does run android under the skin so we can actually install apk files if we want to so if we go back to the main screen we've got all apps so we'll look at all apps uh, so this is basically a selector to show what things you want on the main screen so you can actually turn off certain things so for example you don't you never use am so you want that removed or you never use the app installer you can have that removed as well so and then on this side here we've got home back and then the volume controls and the skip tracks as well so like android just go back one page to go back a page essentially so for the navigation system honda have actually used the garmin system underneath so if we click on navigation we can get directions to certain things so if we click on where to uh, we can use search tools so we can say uh want honda dealerships uh, it'll show me the nearest Honda dealerships for me, which is really good. That being said, we have got wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto on this vehicle, so there's not really much use to use the Garmin system built into the Honda, but it is there in case of emergency situations. So we've got a phone here as well. So it says no phone connected, connect to phone to use this feature, so we'll leave that for now. So we've got FM radio, this will just be a shortcut to the radio system, uh, and we can select DAB if you want to as well. Uh, we've got Bluetooth audio, smartphone connections, so smartphone connection, this will have a CarPlay button if you are using CarPlay, and it'll just be replaced with that. Got Bluetooth audio as well, so again, no device connected, but we can just play music from a Bluetooth source if you want to. Got TA as well, so we can turn the traffic assistance on or traffic information on. Uh, we've got trip computer as well, so this has got some very detailed uh, MPG figures, so we can go in and have a look. So we've got the current trip, current trips as well. So if we start the, we don't need to start the engine actually. Uh, we've got distance uh, totally is 1.7 thousand miles, and then 60 MPG, and it shows you each trip. Uh, trip A when it was reset and how many miles were done. So you can see here it was used for 1500 miles, 61 MPG. So it's a fairly efficient car to be honest. Uh, trip B has never been used, but current drive as well. So pretty good. Second page, got general settings on here. We've got uh, system. So let's have a look in here. Got date and time. Uh, we can set the date and time. So we can go ahead and say automatically set the date and time. And then you can say, yeah, we'll, we'll do that. Uh, we'll go back a page as well. Got time zone. So again, we'll automatically have the time zone set as well, because that'd be good. Automatic daylight saving time, date format, time format as well. I've uh, got languages, so we've got every language. So actually, that's actually fantastic. We can actually go, go ahead and use different languages on the center display or the meter as well. So yeah, good job with that, Honda. Touch panel sensitivity. I found this on the Honda Civic. It doesn't actually do much. Um, when you slept between high and low, it doesn't particularly have much difference. System volumes, you can have a different volume for the system, text-to-speech, navigation, phone calls, that sort of thing. Uh, location of vehicle data sharing, so you can say, yes, I want to share it with Honda. At the moment, this car doesn't actually have a SIM card in it, so it won't actually do anything. Refuel recommend recommends, so it say, do you want the car to tell you when you need to refuel the car, which is quite good. I've got about the car as well, so you can see here, uh, IP address, Wi-Fi MAC address, uh, location only as well. Legal information, model numbers, Android versions. So you see it's running on Android 8, which is actually quite an old version now. Uh, and then the kernel version, build number, uh, factory data reset, detail information. So we're looking here at the manager. So you can see it actually goes into the Android part of the car. You can see what bits and pieces we've got on here. So we've got contacts, DAB, the old custom apps that they've put on here. So it's quite interesting looking here, actually. Uh, we've got system data, Snapdragon cameras, a camera as well. Um, but yeah, it's just the Android under the, underneath, really. Um, factory data reset as well, so you can reset the whole car if we want to as well. Smartphone connection, we've looked at that bit already. Connections, it'll tell you what Wi-Fi hotspots you're connected to or what Bluetooth device you're connected to. Uh, display as well, so you can say the brightness of the display I want to adjust or the contrast levels. Sound as well, so you can set the EQ of the whole car. So we've got a bass treble, and uh, we can set that, I've set that to default because it does sound a bit better. Um, balance and fader, so we can see where we are in the center of the car. Uh, speed volume compensations, so this will get louder when you're going faster to compensate with the amount of road noise. Uh, we've got that set to default again. Uh, as a cameras, so you've got rear camera, uh, and you can say, do you want the guidelines fixed or not? And they've got a voice control as well, so I'm not sure if this is actually to do with Siri or it's to do with the voice control on the actual car. 
um, but it's it's there nonetheless. And then for the vehicle settings, we will have to start the engine, so we'll do that now. And we're going to vehicle settings, so we'll have a quick look in here. So we've got the deflation warning system as well. So it says cancels or calibrates the tyre pressure monitoring system, TPMS, so we can calibrate that if we want to. Uh, driver assistance setup, so we can have a look at what things are in here. It's got preceding vehicle proximity warning distance, automatic cruise control vehicle ahead detected beep, on or off, road departure mitigation setting, delayed, lane keep assist beep, blind spot information, traffic sign recognition, uh, rear sensor settings and that sort of thing. Got meter setup as well, so we've got warning messages, adjust outside temperatures, trip A, trip B, reset timings, alarm voice control, turn by turn display, speed, distance your units, so you can choose between kilometer per hour or miles an hour. Got rear seat reminder so you can turn that on or off, it'll, otherwise it'll tell you what's in the rear seat, which is quite annoying. Lighting setup as well, so you've got automatic high beams, these are on by default. And then you've got interior light dimmer duration, so you can choose between 60, 30 or 15 seconds. You've got headlight auto off timer as well, so you've got 15, 60 or 30 seconds again there. Got headlight integration with wipers, selects on or off the headlight function and wiper operation when the headlight is in auto settings. So um, when the headlights are in auto settings, it'll put the wipers in auto settings, I assume. And then lastly, we've got the door and window setup. So we've got keyless lock notifications. So we've got on or off. This will flash the lights when you lock the car. Security relock timers. We've well, got 30 seconds, 90 or 60. And that is if you don't open any doors after you've unlocked the car, the car will relock after 30 seconds. And they've got automatic folding door mirrors. So if you don't want them to automatically fold when you've locked the doors, you can turn that off if you want to. And we've got USB. So we've got a USB ports down at the bottom there. And we can connect to USB port to get the media off it, whether it be video or audio. Got AM again, DAB. System updates, so this car actually hasn't got any SIM card in it, but if I connect it to a Wi-Fi network, I will be able to get system updates for the car. And we've got the clock as well, so we've got just a, a usual clock, and we can choose between um, certain clock faces here. So we've got quite a few to choose from. We've got, um, that looks like somewhere in America. And we've got some we've got some other ones in here now, so we can change that if we want to. We can have that showing if you want to. So I think if you click on the clock here, yeah, it'll show you the, the clock there. And on the last page, we've got messages, so it'll tell you what messages are from the car. Again, it can't connect to the internet, so it can't do that. We've got display mode, so we've got the same sort of things. We've got uh, brightness control, like at the bottom down here. Owner's manual, so it, there's literally an entire manual on the car. It'll tell you everything you need to know about the car, which is pretty good if you've broken down or we need to change a fuse. So. And then we've got app installer again, so we can actually install APK files if you want to from the USB device. So for the driver's display, we've got a small little screen here. We've got on the right-hand side, we've got how much fuel you've got. On the left-hand side, has how much battery charge you've got left in the car. So in the car, we've got a 0.7 kilowatt hour battery pack, and that will charge up and down depending on whether you're regenerative braking or not. And in the middle here, we've got uh, a view of what seat belts are done up, the speed, uh, what gear you're actually in, uh, sensors for the car, temperature. This is for the left hand side here so we can choose between different widgets and then we've got the sign recognition that'll be for the speed. So just looking at the buttons here we've got the home button there, we've got a jog wheel to switch between different apps, we've got a back button, volume up and down and then that was your shortcut to Siri. So on this side we've got the cruise control settings so we've got the council button, uh, we've got set and then res, uh, limiter and then that's the distance between the cars and then we've got the steering control function to automatically steer you in lane. Just up here we've got the controls for the wipers and then the plus paddle for the regen and then over on this side we've got the controls for the lights and then we've got the minus paddle for the regen. So just look at the widgets on this car. So, so what I'm going to do is click the home button and then you can cycle between different things if you want to. So we're just going to demo that now. So at the moment the main screen is showing the fuel economy. So you can use the jog wheel to switch between trip A and trip B and that will show you what how many miles you've done. So trip B is actually not being reset since the car was rolled off the line which is actually quite funny. And then trip A has been reset every time to sort of get a good idea of the fuel economy. Then if we click the home button here, we've got the access to the widgets. So very much like the Honda E, if we use the scroll wheel, we can view different things. So this one is the battery flow of the car, the energy flow of the car. Uh, it, will, it will light up when you're driving. And then also you've got the fuel economy. So that's one I was just on. And then you can go back a page as well. Uh, we've got the stats for the car, so the MPG. Um, for that one, you have to start the engine. That is the amount of time you've been driving. So at the moment with trip B, 111 hours. And then trip A is 15 hours, so I've had the car since trip A essentially, I've been 16 hours of driving. Uh, music as well, I'll show you what is playing. Uh, we've got the phone phone as well, so there's no phone connected right now. Uh, maps as well, so that'll show you the navigation. So if there are CarPlay navigation running, you'll be able to see exactly what next step you need to do. So at the moment, with no navigation running, it will show you a compass. Uh, that's also the speed limiters, so you can have a speed warning or speed limiter for each one. This is reminding you to take a break. So this, this will essentially have an amount of time between you driving and setting off, and it will remind you to take a break now and again, which is quite good. That's the amount of seatbelts in the car that have been done up, so you can get a good view of who hasn't got their seatbelt done up in the car. And they've got all the sensors as well, so you can quickly go in here and turn off the crash avoidance system, the parking sensors, uh, blind spot monitoring and lane assistance if you want to. And we've got the brightness controls so we can turn up the brightness for this driver's display here. And then we've also got uh, the units as well. So we've got, we can change between mile an hour and kilometers an hour if we want to. So we just hold the 
button down and that will change between the two. And then lastly, we've got a option to turn off certain things. So if we click into this one uh, and choose the jog wheel, we can choose to have certain widgets not showing. Uh, so there's, and all of them are showing here, which is quite good. Personally, I quite like having the view of the car on, so it's when the brake lights are active or the indicators and that sort of thing. So it's quite a nice view of what lights are running on the car. So if you turn the lights on as well, so you, see, you can see you've got the lights turned on there. Quite a nice little feature on the Hondas at the moment. You can see exactly what lights are running. So that's going to do it for this video. Thank you for watching this video from the interface. My name's Alex, and we'll see you again next time.